What is happening, Tiger fans, Tiger people? It's the mid-season review. I'm back. Tiger Den is back. Thank you for jumping back on the channel. I really appreciate the support. We're here with the mid-season review. It's the bye week for the Tigers. We don't play any footy this week. We've got Port Adelaide coming up next week on a Thursday night, then followed by Carlton on another Thursday night. So a couple really big opportunities to start the second half of the year with a bang and really make a good push for finals. But we're here to talk about the season thus far. Uh, I'll give you my thoughts. I'd love to get your feedback in the comments to see what you think and whether you agree or disagree with some of the things I'm saying about the season. But uh, I'll give a quick little overview and then I'll talk about each game and some of the things I'm happy with from positional changes and new things that we've seen this year, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I'll get into it. I think the best way to describe this year is we've had the potential to be in the top four right now, and maybe that's a stretch, but I think we, do, we have. Um, we've honestly played a handful of bad quarters. Uh, most games that we've played, we've had really good games, and it's already been one quarter in each of those games that's let us down. Round one against the Blues, what by 20-something points, 30 points maybe in the, coming in the last quarter. Had a bad last quarter, Blues ever overrun us. Mind you, they're, I had to say, they were a pretty good side this year, so you know, you, you'll take it, but not really because it's Carlton at the same time. Um, and we had that against the Swans, 30 points up at half time. Swans come back in the third quarter and we just couldn't capitalize on the last to get back over the line. So, and there was more, more than just that as an example. So we've had that a few times this year where we've really been in the game, we've been in the lead, we've looked the more dominant side and just whether it's discipline, which I think is a big issue I wanna talk about, um, or just, I don't know, we just can't bury teams or put them away early like we probably should. I mean, we did it against West Coast, but West Coast are bottom of the ladder, and I think a lot of teams are gonna do that to them this year, not just us. But I'll go through a round by round, and a lot of them are gonna be fairly similar, I guess, in terms of, like I just said, bad quarters, but I'll get into what round one, we're six and five, I should say, heading into round, uh, finishing round 11, we're six and five. Not an awful record, you usually make finals if you win more than you lose, and so far we've done that. So. Good signs early, but long way to go. I'll start off, we've got the Carlton game. <clears throat> I was there, I mean, a lot of people were. First game back with crowds, full capacity, it was incredible. We all wanted to be there. Um, the crowd was probably a little bit of a letdown that night, but it was good just to be in the atmosphere anyway and soak it all in. I thought, again, I thought it was gonna be like it is every year against Carlton round one, where it sort of, it looks tight, looks tight, we kick away, we get a strong lead, and we win by about the 25 to 30 points mark. and. I thought, you know, I'll take that round one against the Blues. It's always a good confidence booster going into the season. But as I said, we just, we had that poor last quarter. We let it slip. Um, Dion Prestia had 10 touches in the first quarter, pulls a hamstring. And you just think, this guy can't catch a break. He's had the best preseason by all reports that he's had in a long time. And then, you know, he does a hamstring temp in the, in the end of the first quarter. And he was having an absolute blinder early. I mean, that would have contributed to the fact, but still, we're still 30 points up at you know, various stages of the game. So regardless of whether he was injured or not, we should have clinched on that one, which was really disappointing. But yeah, so that's, another, that's a loss that will, I don't know, I'm hoping it doesn't come to bite us later in the year. We've got the Blues in round 14, and let me tell you, I really want to get over the top of them in that game after what happened in round one. But move on to the Giants at the G. We bounced back really strong, did what we had to do. I mean, we weren't really sure where the Giants were at at this point, so in terms of how tough of a competitor they were going to be, we didn't really know. Toby Green was out, thankfully, helped us a lot. Um, but Dustin Martin, at this point, I'm fairly certain, had taken a break from the game. So, you know, that was a bit of a shock for Richmond fans. We weren't really sure what was happening. We didn't know if he was coming back, when he was coming back. Um, if he was coming back, was he going to play for Richmond again? It was all up in the air. We had no idea. So a bit of a weird week for us. Um, but the bounce back against the Giants was really good. I was happy to see us play some solid footy. And it was consistent. I don't really, from memory, don't think we had a poor, an, an entire poor quarter, um, which probably points to the fact, you know, points to the reasoning that why we won. So that was the Giants. I'll move on the next week. We had the Saints and same thing. It was one poor quarter. Max King just decided to turn it on and... We probably took too long to make the positional change. You put Noah Bolter down into the back line. At that stage, we're still playing him up forward, which I didn't mind the experiment, um, but I think we had to recognize that it really wasn't working and it was something we had to do, and that was to put him in the back line and try and null Max King's influence. But we didn't do it, and King had a bit of a field day on us, and it, and it showed. You know, like once again, that poor quarter lost us the game. Um, we fast forward a week. We had the Doggies, another really good one, four-quarter effort. 
Um, the dogs reigning, or not reigning grand finalists, I should say. So a big scalp for us, and we really needed it as well. We were two and two at this stage, heading into, uh, or no, two and one, sorry, heading into round four. So we really needed this win, and we got it. It was a big win. Um, and we, we always seem to play good footy against the dogs. I'm not sure what it is. Even last year, um, we had a big win against the doggy side. Maybe they're a bit of, we're a bit of the bogey team for them. I'm not sure. We'll take it regardless. And we had the Crows, which in my head, I remember walking into this one thinking, we, we should be winning this game. Adelaide look okay. They don't look great. Um, we should really be walking away with the four points up to this game. And similar to the Saints, that, except we're not Max King, it was Taylor Walker this time. And to be fair, a lot of the things that Taylor Walker did, we, we couldn't have really stopped. He just sort of played out of his ass that game um, and played dominant football. And we couldn't, we couldn't nullify him. Um, and we couldn't hurt them on the rebound and get our own scores on the board, unfortunately. But once again, we played well for most of the game. And I think all these games where we played well for 90% of them, the problem that I'm finding is the difference between our best footy and our worst footy, it's too big of a gap. Because we can get up on teams, like I said, by 30-odd points, but then they're coming back and then hitting the front. So that's how poor those poor quarters have become. And I think a lot of it comes down to discipline, giving away silly free kicks, 50 metre penalties. Um, it's happened so frequently this year and it's frustrating to see. And I know as a Richmond supporter, we all, we all reckon we're pretty hard done by by the umpires and you look at the free kick tally and we're always right down the bottom in terms of teams that get free kicks. Um, and look, we, we probably are a little bit stiff, but you know, a lot of these 50s and free, free kicks that we're giving in front of goal, a lot of the time is just undisciplined. So... It can be rectified. That's that's the positive, is that these things that we're doing aren't necessarily things that can't be fixed. I mean, becoming more disciplined, that's not necessarily the hardest thing to do. So I'm looking forward to that, the opportunity to do that in the second half. No doubt it's getting drilled into the boys. So we'll wait and see. But we'll move on from the Melbourne game. We had a string of four wins in a row. We had West Coast, we had Collingwood, Hawthorne, and then the Bombers at the G for Dreamtime. I've got the jumper right here. It's an absolute ripper. I came in the mail the other day. I'm loving it. I've got a bit of a collection going now with the Dreamtime jerseys. But we're getting to the West Coast game. There's not really much to say. I mean, West Coast is that team this year. They're one of the worst performing teams in history, really. I mean, I saw an article the other day that was saying they're historically bad. Um, so I think we won by 109 points, which incredible. Tom Lynch kicked his way into form. I think he needed that game. Um, regardless of the opponent, I think kicking seven goals is going to boost your confidence no matter what. So... That was incredible. It was good, good fun to watch for a Richmond supporter. Um, we didn't stress for any of the game, really. So we'll take that. We moved on the next week against the Pies. Pies are up and down all year. Really not sure how good they are. I mean, before, you know, just after making this video, they've played some pretty good footy the last few weeks. You know, they knocked off Carlton last week. So they're, they're in some pretty good form. But at the time, weren't really sure. They'd had some good games, some bad games. They lost to West Coast earlier in the year. So didn't know what to think about it. But I think we just did what we had to do. We came out, I think it was had a 25-point-odd win. It was, it was good football. Um, we always loved beating an arch rival in Collingwood. Um, so that was a really good game to watch. And Tom Lynch again kicked six. So he's two weeks in a row now, seven goals against the West Coast, six against the Pies. We think, geez, he's really found some form here. Like, we're loving what we're seeing here with Lynchy. And um, it's just, it's so good to see a key forward that's copped a fair bit of criticism um, at his time with the club, which, you know, probably warranted. He's had games where he really hasn't had much of an influence and Dimmer says that he's, or claims and says that he's playing his role, which I believe he would be. Um, I feel like my biggest issue with Lynch at certain stages has been that he doesn't lead at the football as much as he used to. He more will stand and be like, yep, 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 pop it here, pop it here, put it on my head, and then three defenders get to him. There's only so much he can do, and I think he's been told to get the ball to ground, which is all good and well, but when you've got a bloke as big as Tom Lynch, as good a jukes as Tom Lynch, let him lead at the footy. Take a big mark, go back, kick a goal. Like, he's kicking, he's letting down as well. Don't get me wrong, it's let him down for sure. But I still think when he plays dominant, like he did, like I think against West Coast and Collingwood, he had a few misses. West, Colling, no, West Coast game, he kicked 7-5, I'm pretty sure. So, could have had 12. And obviously those misses are disappointing, but the opportunities that he's given himself to get on the scoreboard is what we want to see. And I think... For the rest of the year, we're going to have to see that. Surely they can't take that you know, running and leading game away from him now after what we've seen. So hopefully that's not the case. We'll wait and see, and we'll see Lynchy take some more big grabs. The Hawthorne game, another one. We had a poor quarter again, 
and the Hawks came right back at us. And I remember I was watching this one from home because I was playing my own game of football that day. And I reckon it was, I watched the replay and it was probably midway through the last quarter. I was, I was pretty tired. I'd worked in the morning, I'd played football and it was probably about 5.30, 6 o'clock and I'm watching the replay and I'm starting to, starting to fall in, in and out of consciousness. I'm dozing off, I was pretty sleepy and I thought, we've got this game in the bag, we're playing pretty good footy. Um, I sort of just come to it a little bit more and I pay attention to the score and I think, oh geez, Hawthorne's come right back. And again, a poor quarter, we were lucky to hold this one off, but you know, against teams like Melbourne um, and the, Bull, the Bulldogs, which we got lucky against, I guess, but the Bulldogs, the Lions, um, all those sorts of teams, we're not gonna knock them off. Um, but speaking of Melbourne, I did skip over that game, Anzac Day Eve, it was after the Adelaide game, I, I missed it on my list over here, but that was another one where we were probably lucky Melbourne couldn't kick straight early. I remember thinking, we're up at half time against the reigning premiers, undefeated so far they are, but they've kicked terribly, and if you look at the points that they've kicked, they probably should have been in front, so it was kind of only a matter of time before Melbourne switched it on and dominated and they did that in the third quarter which have done a lot this year it's so disappointing but also it's melbourne and they've played some seriously good footy up to this point in the season they've lost two games now um at the date of recording so not bad um you know for 11 games in you've only lost two they'll, they'll absolutely take that but um it gives me positive signs though that we can take it to those teams um because look they did miss a lot but a lot of that was due to our pressure as well so Look at it how you will, but I think we can take to those teams when we play our best footy. But if we lapse, like we have in multiple games, those teams are going to kill us. We got lucky against the Hawks, like I just said, but we'll take it. It's another win, and then we roll on to the next week. Dream time at the G against the Bombers. This is the game I love winning more than any other. Uh, I don't know what it is about the Bombers. I can't stand them. So knocking them off, dream time at the G is absolutely incredible. I love doing that. I think we've won the last... 12 games against them now or something like that it could be more i can't remember but that was another one it was a bit of an uninteresting game um the the most interesting part for me was honestly the most exciting part of the game was the pre-game show the um the rituals that they were doing the the war cry that the, the boys did and they all got in the huddle got around all our indigenous players i thought it was incredible uh, and that was probably the most exciting part of the game for me i thought it was a bit of a lackluster match um we played okay just enough to get the job done, nothing special, didn't do anything crazy. Lynchy, unfortunately, did a hamstring. Um, Kane Lambert went off as well with his, uh, that hip complaint that he's been having, so I'm really hoping that both those boys will be right for just after the bye, along with Noah Bolter. I can't wait for him to come back. Um, but yeah, the Bombers game was a bit lackluster, and uh, you know, good to win against the Bombers and good to win in general, but not one I'm going to look into too much. And then we fast forward again to Friday, last Friday night against the Swannies, and I thought, oh boy, this is a test. This is what we needed. We needed the test against the Swans because they'd been a little bit up and down as well, but they were top eight side and they played some seriously good footy. They charged back real hard the week before against the Blues and the Blues jumped them early and they came back hard and I thought, we're every chance to beat this mob, but once again, can't have that luck in poor quarters. And what happened? The same thing. We were 30 points up at half time. I was sitting in my lounge room pretty comfortable that we we're going to get a win. I thought, geez, this is massive for us. We're going to keep ourselves in the top eight right where we want to be, heading into the bye. We then have a couple of other games afterwards that were very winnable um, from my point of view. And third quarter, Swans came out. We just dropped. We gave away silly free kicks, 50-meter penalties. Um, the disappointing part was that both one of those each, the 150 was from Nank and the other one was from uh, Dylan Grimes, a free kick to Buddy Franklin pretty much right in front of goal. And it's it hurts when they're your captains and they're sort of the ones you look to to sort of obviously to lead the club and not do those things, but you're not gonna take that aggression away from Nank because that's what makes him who he is. And Grimes, just an unlucky slip up, I guess, but gotta be more careful, I think, and because those can really be game costly. But they weren't, oh, they were, sorry, they were game costly because then we did have our opportunities again in the last quarter. Um, played some good footy, but it was just little things, like little moments that didn't go our way. Dustin Martin from the top of the goal square went to snap it in, he hit the middle of the boot and it goes out of bounds on the full. When has Dusty ever done that? You've, we never see that. And then Shea Bolton, I think, kicked three behinds in that last quarter. He, he always kicks those sort of, he's a match winner, and he kicks those goals nine times out of 10. And it just wasn't our day. I think it wasn't meant to be for whatever reason, but got to the line. And I did just touch on Dusty, and I want to quickly rewind back to the Collingwood game when Dusty made his long-awaited return 
to the club, um, to AFL football. I think the world, AFL world is better with Dustin Martin playing. And he played some good footy, kicked a couple of goals. He's played relatively consistent all the way through for a guy that missed a large chunk of the season. Um, and the late last, late, oh, I can't even speak, a, a late chunk of last season, he missed a massive amount of football. And he's really, up until the Collingwood game, he'd really only played one game in six odd months of footy. So he's played some really consistent football. I'm really hoping that he'll hit his straps running as we get deeper and deeper into the season and he'll start lifting as each week goes. But we know what to expect from Dustin Martin. He's going to bring it each week, really. So no point um, dwelling on that. But that is round one to 11. Like I said, we're six and five. Not a bad place to be. And I think we should be have a better record than that. Um, but six and five will take. I mean, like I said, as long as you win more games than you lose, more often than not, you'll play finals. And that's where we want to be. We dipped out last year, obviously due to a number of reasons, injuries, just poor performance, um, probably a bit of a hangover from being at the top of the top of the table and winning premierships for, you know, from 17 to 20. It's a long period of time to be right at the top and dominating, which not a lot of teams can do. I mean, Geelong are a good team. They're probably, probably an example that we want to follow in terms of being up top for a long period of time. Um, but one year dipping out, isn't the end of the world. I think we should be back there this year. I expect us to be. I think we're good enough to be when we play our best football. It's just we're going to find that week in, week out. That's rounds 1 to 11. I now want to talk about the top five things, um, changes that the team has made, whether that's inclusions, positional changes, etc., etc., that I'm really happy with and I think are going to just push us forward, um, not just this year, but in years to come. So let me know in the comments if you agree, but I really wanted to see what everybody thinks of this. So my top five changes in no particular order. The first one technically happened last year, but I think we've seen it, we've seen it flourish this year, and that's Daniel Rioli at the halfback. He is such a silky player. He's got speed. His ball use is incredible. I think if you look at the stats for most games, his ball use is usually... Usually 80% disposal efficiency or above in most games. I mean, he's really clean with his footy um, and he's so defensively minded. I mean, we saw it when he was a small forward and he would hunt and tackle and all that, but I think he really started to struggle towards the back end of his sort of forward career. Uh, I think this move has been genius by Damien Hardwick and the coaching staff and he's really flourishing at halfback. I'm loving Daniel Rowley and I think he's going to be one of the most improved players in the competition. Um, I'm loving what I'm seeing from Daniel, so... That's my number one. I think, like I said, in no particular order, but I think if there was, this would still be the number one. So I get into number two, Jaden Short in the midfield. Now, I know he doesn't play there constantly, but him pinch hitting in the midfield, I think has been fantastic. I mean, his long booming boot, just inside 50s, clearances, he's so good for it. He's such a clever player. I mean, off the half back, he racks up 30 odd touches a week regardless. Um, and the fact that he's now pinch hitting occasionally in the midfield, I'm loving it. He's played some really good games where we've had him doing that. Um, and I wouldn't mind seeing that go forward. I know we want to blood some midfielders that we already do have, um, you know, get some more game time into them and watch them just own their craft, but, um, or hone their craft, I should say. But I don't mind seeing Shorty in there when we need him as well because he's played some really good footy in there. So that's my second one. My third one, probably a bit of a cop out here, but pushing Noah Bolzer back into the back line. Um, I've, been, I've been known to say that I was loving the idea of putting Noah Bolter in the forward line, his athleticism, um, his leap. He's just, he's hard to stop when he's in the air. And I thought, geez, you've got Jack, Tom, Noah Bolter, who do you man up on as a back line? Like as a defense, you don't know who, to, it's hard to choose who to take because they're all dangerous. Um, but I did feel that we were exposed in the back line at numerous stages this year. Yes, we were missing some players. Grimes, he missed a couple, I know, and then Vlosten missed a bit. So like, we were left a bit wide open in our back line, I guess. And I think we took too long to maybe make that adjustment and say, you know what, Noah, we, we don't mind you as a forward. And I guess going forward, who knows? It could happen again. Um, but I think we had to bring him back. And I think when we did bring him back, we noticed the difference straight away. Our back line looked a lot more sound. The structure was a lot better. Um, and I mean, look, we, we said it in his first season that he looks like he'll become the next Alex Rance for us. So... Why waste an opportunity to have another Rance-like player come to the club and dominate you know, the way we know he can? So I was really happy to see them put him in the back line. But I, you know, there is a spot in my heart where I think we could have him in the forward line in years to come. I just don't think this year is the year to do that. If we want to, if we want to seriously have another push um, at playing finals and trying to get deep into them, you know, especially for blokes like Koch, 
Lambert, Jack, Shedder, all these guys that potentially on their last season or last couple of seasons, you know, you, we want to go hard at least one more time. And I think this year we can do it if we play consistent footy. And having Noah Bolton in the back line is going to push us in the right direction. Top five things that have impressed me. Oh, no, sorry, I haven't finished my list of changes. And the, third, the fourth change is bringing Morris Rioli into the side. His forward pressure is electric. You know when Dustin Martin gets the footy and he looks on goal and he goes to snap and the crowd goes bananas when he grabs the ball? The crowd goes like that for Morris when he's chasing someone. He doesn't even have to have the football in his hand to get the crowd up and about. He's lightning, he's electric. When he kicks a goal, we all love it. Don't get me wrong, but it's his forward pressure that we're absolutely loving. And it's been lacking in the last little little bit, you know, from blokes that would normally provide that for us. Um, and Morris has brought that right back into the side. And I'm loving what I'm seeing from Morris Riley, and I hope he keeps his spot on the side because his forward pressure is second to none. So that's my number four. And my fifth one, and I mean, it probably comes as no surprise, Josh Gibkiss. How he hasn't had a Rising Star nomination yet, I, it, it baffles me. He rarely loses a one-on-one. He's so clean in the air. His kicking and disposable efficiency is incredible. He did have a couple of poor ones late against the Swans. I know, I know. He's 18 though, 18, 19, whatever he is. He's so young. He's going to make mistakes. He's a kid. But he is so good. And I think we've got to get pen to paper with him ASAP because he is going to be... He's going to be a 200-plus game player. He is incredible. Um, and from what we're seeing so early on in his career, I'm really excited. So Josh Gibkiss, I'm his number one fan at the moment. I think I'm loving what he's putting out in the park. And I hope we can see that a lot more going forward. And especially with blokes like Grimesy around him. you got Bolter back there again. Robbie Tarrant, just his experienced heads to help him develop. I think it's going to be fantastic for him and fantastic for us as Richmond supporters. So really, really excited. Now to my top five things. Um, that have just impressed. So not necessarily changes, but just players that I think have performed well this year. And I'll start with number one, and that's Trent Cotchin. I thought his round, his round one performance, he copped a bit of criticism and people were saying, so Trent, this might be your time to, you know, to be hanging up, um, let the game go, it's a bit behind you. And then ever since then, he has been, obviously he's not a captain anymore, but he has been that leader on field, that, that crash and bash. He's, he doesn't have to get 35 touches a game like he used to in you know, 2012, 2013. We don't need that from him, but he just he puts his body on the line week in, week out. He's one of the bravest players I know. Um, go back to the Swans game where Buddy, someone kicked it to Buddy Franklin. Buddy is charging full pelt. Mind you, Buddy's what, 6'6", six, six, has to weigh over 100 kilos. Cochin threw his body in front of Buddy Franklin to spoil that ball away and caused the stoppage. Got got you know got the ball out of Buddy's hands. It was it was one of the, he got stitches in his head. I mean, but he got up straight away, bounced back, kept running. I mean, that's the kind of player Cochin is. And I think the considering that he was copping a bit of flack early in the year, um, even towards the end of last year, saying time mate, hang him up. He's bounced back phenomenally, and I know he hasn't done it to prove people wrong. He's done it for the club, and that's just the type of bloke he is. But I'm loving seeing that. So. Trent Cotchin, that's my number one. Number two, Tommy Lynch. Like I said, he had a patch in the season where he kicked seven, six. Um, the Bombers, he did do his hamstring and he kicked zero, four. So he probably should have had four against the Bombers before he tore his hamstring. But it's the fact that he's leading, he's presenting again, he's clunking everything in the air. He's racking up disposals as well. I'm pretty sure he had 25 touches a few weeks back, I mean, potentially against Collingwood. So loving what we're seeing from Lynchy. Three, Marlon Pickett. He's missed a lot of footy this year, but I feel like every time he's in the side, I'm a lot more confident going into a game. Him and Camden on the wings are the perfect duo, I think. And, you know, the, the AFL talks about the lack of pure wingmen. And, well, Pickett might not be a pure wingman. I think McIntosh probably is, but it's what Pickett does and how he goes about it. He can hit the scoreboard. He puts his body on the line. He runs back. He defends. He, he does it all, really. And I'm this, I think this is his best season he's had thus far. Um, obviously coming in 2019, debuting in the grand final. Um, and he's had a couple of years under the belt since then. But I think this year so far is his best season. And he hasn't, he's missed a lot of footy. Um, and I'm really disappointed for him that he didn't get to wear this jersey for the Dreamtime game or then the week after because he missed for illness against the Swans. So I'm hoping we can make a deal with the AFL. We can wear this jersey again because him and his partner did design this. And it's an absolute ripper. It's one of my favorites. Um, I'm loving it. So... Hopefully Pickett can wear that again, but yeah, he's another one I've been really impressed with. Uh, I've then got Shea Bolton, and it's Shea, not Shy. For those watching, it's Shea Bolton, but Shea, I mean, we knew, it's not really a surprise what he's been doing for us this year, but 
it's just he's been a lot more consistent in doing so. He, he kicks mo- in most games. He kicks multiple goals. Um, he gets clearances for us. He's so nifty. I mean, he, he's got to be the hardest player to tackle in the league. I mean, everyone says how hard Dustin Martin is with his fend off, but Shea Bolton just dances around players and makes them look silly. If I'm honest, so Shea Bolton is another one that I'm like, I'm loving. I'm loving at the moment. He's playing some great, great footy. Um, no surprise there though. So I've gone to my last one, and that's Dion Press, the other meatball. He's missed a bit of footy this year as well, but every time he's in the side, he he could miss three games, come back and play, and it looks like he's missed none at all. He is he just fits seamlessly back into our midfield, and he's so so important for us. You can just tell when that midfield's clicking. It always consists of Prestia, Lambert, Cochin, like all these guys are just sort of dusty. Obviously, these guys are sort of help each other gel together, and Prestia is honestly the core of that. I believe. I reckon he is our best midfielder. He just is so damaging. Um, he's really handy, and he's starting, to, he's starting to kick a lot more goals as well. I mean, not an abundance of goals, but when he get, when he gets a look, he's a pretty accurate kick. I've noticed, so I'm loving that as well from Pressia. I'm hoping we can keep him on the park, keep his hamstrings good. The week off with the bye hopefully helps him. Hopefully helps a few of the other boys. Like I said, we've got a few injuries to come back. We've got Lambert, we've got Lynch, um, Noah Bolter. If all these guys can come back in the next week or so, I'm hoping they're all back for Port Adelaide. Um, but even if they're back for the Carlton game, that'd be massive. We've got a couple of big opportunities coming up, so I'm loving that. But before I wrap up, we did just have the mid-season draft, and I kept telling myself, with Caddy retiring, it gave us a spot to pick somebody up, and I thought, you know what, if we're going we're gonna to do this, we're going to do it right, and I think, what do we really need? And I think it's a key forward that we're after. We really need a key forward. Um, Lynch, Jack's, I reckon Jack's got another year left in him if he wanted to. I think he's playing good enough footy. Um, but if not, we still need a, we still need a forward going forward. Um, we've got to look post Jack, unfortunately, which we haven't had to think about for a long time. But Jack is, you know, in his later he's in later stage of his career, so we need to start thinking about what we do going forward without Jack. And in comes Jake Bauer or Jake Bauer, could be wrong, but he's a tall forward, 19 years old. He kicked 16 goals in six games in the Sandful. He's athletic. Um, he can launch at the ball, take some really good marks, and he's really mobile. He gets up and down the ground really well. And I watched some of the highlights in the Sandford he's done this year. And yeah, I think he's going to be a talent, a massive talent for us. And whether he plays this year or if it's more next year, or, you know, who knows? Touch wood, hopefully no one gets injured. But he could come in if we have an injury up forward and take that place and really cement his spot on the side. Who knows? And I think this is a great pickup for the Tigers. We needed, we needed a forward. I mean... During the Swans game, we pushed Gibkiss into the forward line in that last quarter just for a bit of a Hail Mary, and he came out, took a big grab, went back, slotted his first goal in AFL footy. Really important time. Pressure was on, and I thought, geez, this kid could play anywhere, but I don't want to touch Gibkiss's positioning. I want to leave him in the back line. It was smart to do at the time, but he's not going to be a forward for us going forward, I wouldn't have thought. So I'm happy with this pickup in the mid-season draft. I'm really excited for what he's going to bring. But that's it. That's that's the mid-season draft. I think going forward, things that I want to concentrate on are finals, for me, are a must. Um, we need to be more disciplined. That's the biggest one because we've lost games due to our discipline and the amount of free kicks we've given away. Some aren't there, I know, I know, but still going to be more disciplined. And I think lastly, we've got to beat Carlton in round 14. We've got to beat Carlton um, after round one. It's that rivalry that you know we all love, both going both ways, Richmond and Carlton supporters. And I think we've had such a... Uh, a good run with you know wins against them I guess in round one and all that since 2013 was um, the last time we lost to them and we've had a really good run since then the Blues are a good side this year they're going to be a challenge um, they have been on most sides but really want to beat them round 14 just get one back on them and see how we go but that is it for the mid-season review let me know what you think if you agree with some of the things I was impressed with uh, what you think we need to do going forward to make sure we play finals football um, but until then I guess enjoy the week off, um, you know, do some scouting, watch some other games, see what we've got coming up in terms of Port, Carlton, the next two weeks. Um, but enjoy the week off and look forward to a really massive Thursday night clash against Port Adelaide at the MCG next Thursday night. Go Tigers. <laughs>